today's tutorial is about how to edit your raw images and how to get back your beautiful and vibrant colors the way you're looking at your images are on the lcd screen of your camera so today's tutorial is about how to edit your raw files and get back those beautiful uh colors uh the way you're looking at your images in photoshop and if i can go ahead i'm running from one's photography and this tutorial is going to be a short one so we're not, we are not going to be doing any retouching this tutorial is about uh, the basic adjustments you have to apply to your raw images in order to get back those beautiful and vibrant colors in photoshop and uh, the various steps are going to be using today are the same you can use uh when you import your photos into lightroom to get back the beautiful colors uh, the, uh actually the colors you'll be looking at in your jpeg files maybe on your pc or your monitor so let's kick in and we start uh doing this tutorial and showing you guys the adjustments you have to uh, follow when you are uh, getting back those beautiful and vibrant colors for your raw images in photoshop so as you can see the details for this image uh this is uh we are now in my camera row you can see camera row 9.9 .9 version and i use the canon 6d camera and for the lens that i use for this image i use a canon 85 millimeter 1.8 and i shot this image at f5 and uh the shutter speed was one out of 1250th of a second and the ice was 400 for my lighting setup i use a godox ad 600 bm and it was in a softbox you can see right here in the corner so let's kick in and we start doing these adjustments so that we can get back those beautiful and vibrant colors the way you're looking at the image in your camera screen so let's come and usually uh, I have an older version for camera raw, so I prefer this version because uh, the newer versions are kind of a little bit complicated. That's why I have not updated my Photoshop yet. So I usually come to camera calibration and uh, when you come to camera calibration, remember uh, different cameras have different camera profiles. So when you click right here, you see different camera profiles and uh, for this image, uh usually the default for your camera row or lightroom is usually adobe standard i don't know why it is always this way but uh, this is usually the uh, default for your camera camera row or lightroom so i prefer to first of all calibrate my image to get back at least this is usually my very step uh my very first step for uh, before I do any other adjustments in camera or my Lightroom. So I come right here to a camera profile and for Lightroom usually this option is uh, way down uh, next to your um, image details, the sharpness and the luminance. I hope you guys are understanding this. I wish I could uh, do a tutorial on both Photoshop and Lightroom but uh, right now we're going to be dealing with only camera row so uh usually for me i prefer to shoot my images in a uh, landscape camera landscape, uh, landscape because it gives me those rich and vibrant colors for all my images so come and select uh, you, you also have to be knowing uh the picture profile in which the images are taken if at all you didn't take the images you have to inquire with the photographer because this step is re uh, really important so uh when i click on uh, landscape you can see I've already gotten back uh, the colors. Let me show you guys. You can see the before and after. You can see I've already gotten back most of the colors. So what I'm left to do is uh, get uh, doing the basic sliders or the basic adjustments in camera. So after calibrating my image, I'll come back to the basic sliders. And I'm going to play around with these uh, sliders for this image. So first of all, I prefer to pull my highlights all the way down because I want to get back the information uh, right here in the sky and uh, her cloth. That's why I first of all pull this down. And for my outdoor images, I also come to my whites after my highlights and I prefer to knock them down uh, because I want to gain... Uh, this sky back so i think that is fine then after doing that i prefer to come to my blacks and i knock them down 
because I want now to bring back my colors to this image. And now I'm going to come to my shadows and I'm going to pump them up. Yeah, so I think that is fine. So after doing this, I prefer to add a little bit of contrast to all my images because I usually shoot my images that are without contrast in them. So I'm going to come to contrast and I'm going to put a little bit of contrast to around four because I don't want to add so much contrast because I pulled my blacks all the way down. And one thing about the shadows is when you pull the shadows all the way up, uh, most of the blacks will kind of lose the details. So that's why you shouldn't pull the shadows actually past around past 50 or no past 60. So come to your exposure because I feel this image is quite of unexposed. So I'm going to pump up the exposure a little bit. You can see now we are getting back at uh, the colors. So you can see we started right here and we are here right now. You can see the colors are back. So I prefer to add a little bit of uh, vibrance to my image because I want uh, these colors to really pop. So I come to my vibrance and I'm going to add a little bit of vibrance to around six. Then I'll come to my clarity because I prefer to add a little bit of clarity because it brings back those beautiful uh, skin details and it adds some tones, that some beautiful tones to the image. So let me show you guys what clarity does. So when I pull the clarity all the way, you can see uh, the tones are really too much and the image uh, has a little bit of contrast and it is so so much detailed so it is more of a a high dynamic range image so i wouldn't want to put this in uh portrait so i'm going to come and, and knock this down <coughs> sorry so that is my clarity i prefer to put it around six percent as you can see i did not tamper with my white balance so I'm going to come to my detail panel and I'm going to do a little bit of sharpening to this image. So before I can do my sharpening, I prefer to first of all mask my image. So I hold down the alternate button and click on this slider and move it until I see the area I really want to add my sharpening onto. So you can see I want to sharpen add uh, these very details as you can see in the image are uh, the people the background and maybe uh, where they were standing so i think that is fine so i'm going to sharpen and for my sharpening i prefer to hold down the alternate button too and the image will turn to black and red so you can see when i pull it uh, all the way up you can see what happens to my image and I wouldn't want to put so much happening, so I'm going to leave it at around 39. And for the luminous and contrast, I prefer to leave them the way they are. So if at all you would like to play around with uh, the other colors, you can come to uh, right here to the HSL panel. You can see when you come to the HSL panel, it will show you like these different uh, colors. So each individual color, you can see, has its own slider. You have the reds, oranges, yellows, greens, aquas, blues, purples, and magentas. So you can see when we come to the hues, you can see for like for the greens, if I told you one plan with, uh, with the green colors in this image, and you turn down the, uh, the greens, you get that kind of autumn look. For your images and when you pull them uh, all the way up it kind of adds that bluish feel to your green colors so i prefer to for this tutorial i'm going to leave them at around nine and after this i'm going to come to uh, you can come to your yellows and you play around with them to see what really works for you but when you play around with this slider remember it is going to be affecting hard dress so i wouldn't want to tamper with uh the yellow slider 
So saturation, I hope you guys can really understand what saturation is all about. It is all about the intensity of that particular color. So let me show you guys what saturation is all about. So for example, for the yellows, when we come to the yellow slider and move it all the way down, remember, as you can see this uh, slider, the way it is colored, uh, when you pull it all the way down, uh, the yellow color on this slider goes on reducing. You can see this. So when you turn it down, uh, you remove all the yellows from your image. And when you pull it all the way up, it will make your yellows really saturated and will add the intensity of the yellow color in your image. So it is all about this. So if at all you feel you want to pump it all the way up, you can. And for this uh, image, I'm going to just uh, leave my yellow slightly above to around it. So I'm just uh, showing you guys how these sliders really work. And for the luminance, I, it is either the brightness a, or darkness or a, of a, a given color. So luminous is all about the brightness or darkness of a given color. So you see the yellow color right here. When you turn it all the way down, you can see it has made uh, the yellows really darker and uh, so, so much dark. So when you turn it up, it makes it brighter. So that is all about luminous and that is what luminous does to the images. So I think we are done with that. So what else would I show you guys? I think uh, that is all I do for my images. So for those that have been asking how I do transform my images, my raw files, so that I can get back my colors the way they were for uh, my retouching, before my retouching, this is what I do to adjust these colors. And after you have done all this, you can just click open image to uh, open your image into your Photoshop and you can go ahead and do the retouching for your images and Yeah, and usually I'm going to show you guys in my next tutorial I'm going to show you guys how I do retouch my outdoor images in Photoshop and yeah, this is all for this tutorial. I'm Ronix from Ronix Photography Thank you for watching and I'll see you in yet another tutorial that, that is going to be the retouching of this very image in Photoshop.